Welcome back, how you doing? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make the hammer animation that was featured in the hammer tutorial part 1 and 2. So as you can see the animation playing there, we've got some camera cuts as well. So I'll show you how to do that, so stick around and enjoy. This is the original scene um, in Blender which I made for the animation. And I will break it down for you. You can see that if I play the timeline, we've got some camera options there, markers they're called in the timeline. I'll show you, as I say, how to set those up. But for now, let's hop over to a fresh version of Blender. And this is the hammer object in all of its um, individual parts. There we go. So a fair few elements there. And the challenge is, how do you animate all of those as one individual object? So there are all of um, the objects in the outliner. So I'm just gonna select those and delete the keyframes of the animation. And now we've got nothing happening at all, no animation, so that's good. So the next step is really very straightforward. Add a empty, and this is, in this case I chose a cube because it kind of just wraps around really. So position the cube roughly in the middle, scale it out in all the axes to make sure it snugly fits the hammer bounding box really. Just scale that in the Y as well. Just like that, and that will do. Something like that is good. Of course, you can use any empty you like. Once you've done that, it's a good idea to rename the empty to something that you're going to recognize later on. I'm going to call that hammer group. And now I'm going to select all of the objects and then select the empty last. That's really important. And then press Ctrl P, parent to object. And that's it. Deselect everything, select the cube and press R twice to pivot it around like that. You can see that's working really well now. And of course, all the individual objects are still there. So I'm just gonna drop that empty um, object into the hammer group collection. Back to the original file, you can see there we've got these um, camera markers, which I'll show you how to do. So I've got, what, about five there? Five different cuts. So again, back to this file, what we're going to do is we're going to split the window first and just add a, a camera view so we can see what we're doing. There we go. And now we're going to rotate this. Switch to the rotate tool and use local because it really helps to keep the axes um, you know, relative to the object itself. So I'll just give that a rotation and press I to in, uh, create an I, uh, a keyframe. Sorry and select rotate and then move your playhead along to the last frame whatever that is in fact let me just uh, make some tweaks here let's set that to 180 turn off the preview go to the last frame now you want to rotate it on the local axis which is the uh, the, the Z actually looks like in this case. And again, press I to create a rotation keyframe. And that's pretty much it. Now, at this point, move your mouse over the keyframes, press T and select linear. That way you don't get any slowdown and speed up in the animation. You have a constant linear animation, which is what you want for a looping animation. Right, and then also the first frame and the last frame are exactly the same. So I'm going to zoom in to the first keyframe and just shift it to the left by one frame. That will make the animation seamless now. That's pretty much it for that. And the rest of the animation is created using camera um, jumps if you like, cuts. And to do that, to add a marker, move your mouse pointer over the timeline and press the M key. And that will create a marker and then rename that to, I don't know, camera one. And with that done, you want to select the camera. And press that there, but first I need to make it edit selectable. So just like that, 
go back to marker, bind camera to markers, and you can see there, it's actually, it still says camera, but uh, on the marker, because our camera is named camera. So let me add a second camera at frame 60. I'm just gonna move that, but first let's, um, let's reset the rotation. Rotate it 90 on the X axis, so it's facing in the right direction. Just move it along somewhere like that. And again, move your mouse pointer over the timeline, press the M key that creates a new marker, rename it and so on. Oops, got that wrong. Camera two. And probably a good idea to uh, just bind the camera to the marker first, just like that. You can see there that snaps there. Also, I move the camera up into the appropriate collection. And I think it's probably a good idea to rename these two camera one and camera two so we know what we're doing. Now you can see there that's replicated in the in the timeline, which is great. So again, same thing now at the third camera. You can see that working. So from this point on, you can add as many cameras as you like, bind them to the timeline and that creates your cuts. So let me just show that again. I'm going to duplicate that camera this time, shift it down, get a different view. There we go. Back to the timeline, move the playhead to anywhere you like and press the M key We get a new marker and rename it to camera three. And remember to rename the camera in the outliner as well and bind it to that marker. We'll just play that back and see how that looks. Fantastic. Very simple to do, but really effective. Okay, with that done, I created another scene with a UV sphere in the middle and various other primitives around that. So I use this technique um, quite frequently just to create like some really dynamic images. So the idea is the same really, same principle, um, create an empty, in this case I'm just going to create a, a mesh circle actually. Um, I'm not sure why I did that, but I could have just used a, an empty as well. And just going to apply the scale as well for that. And let's just move that out the way, give it a, a quick rename so we know what it is. Let's just call that objects group. Let's select all of our objects individually. Select the, the circle. Oops, before I do that, let's just turn on motion blur. The idea here is to um, animate many objects in one with one object, basically, as one object. So we don't have to do this individually for every single object. Right, so select all of the objects, select the circle or the empty last, and again, control P, and parent to object. And now you've got the same as we did with the hammer. And once you've done that, you can just set up the camera and then apply a couple of keyframes to that circle, um, spinning around 360 degrees. So let's just do that. Very simply, just uh, give that an angle that you like. I'll scale it down actually. Right, with that done, press the I key, insert a rotation, uh, a keyframe rotation, sorry. Let me just change that to uh, 60 frames per second so you get a nicer playback. Let's change that to 180 again. So it's three seconds long. And with the keyframe on the first frame, let's jump to 180, the last frame. And hold down control as you spin that round. You can see in the top left, incremental rotation and then again press I and add a rotation keyframe and there you go again we've got the accelerate and deaccelerate happening so move your mouse pointer over the timeline press T and select linear that will give you a constant motion in the animation and the reason I do this is because I want to I don't I don't want to render an animation I want to render a still image but I want to have motion blur so you need to have movement in the scene 
to generate the motion blur. Which is why this technique just is so simple and it works really well. So at that point you can go to the frame that you want to render and you can see there we've got motion blur turned on. So let's head over to these parameters for motion blur. Let's increase that to 0.75 and see how that looks now. So you can see from the higher the number, um, that will give you a longer motion blur effectively. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that. If you like this uh, video, please do like and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye for now.